WBGFM, locals talking to locals. Time to say good morning to our Greater Wellington Regional Rep, Penny Gaylor. Good morning, Penny. Good morning. Hope we're all toasty this morning because it's a bit fresh outside. It is a bit fresh. You've got a lot of rain up around Otaki there at the moment too, haven't you? Yes, I was out and about and there were some quite heavy uh, bursts coming down. So, uh, yes, so keep dry, keep warm and all that. Good on you. Um, when I was out and about, I saw the new buses that are um, driving on the routes for the Kapiti area and uh, the 290 was coming through or taking and picking people up on the state highway. So um, been noticing that uh, new style of bus this week, so looking good. Yes, the ones around Mike and I presume might be the same one, the smaller type bus, and they're very quiet yes. too, aren't they? Yes, and I, you know, I was standing there on the street and I was just watching as people getting on and, and kind of watching that, um, you know, those who are kind of were paying cash of it, some young ones in the school holidays were paying um, and sorting things out with the driver, so it did take a little bit longer, whereas those people who buy the snapper card, um, you know, you you actually just get on, swipe, find your seat, you are done. And then as you get off, swipe, and you are off. Yeah, that's right. Um, and then when the bus took off, I just stood there and kind of watched as it went off. And yes, I noticed it was quieter. And there wasn't the fumes pouring out the back because, of course, the big difference for uh, us in Kapiti is that the buses that um, we're getting are have a, a, a really good cut in terms of the emissions that they're putting out the back of the bus. So uh, something in the vicinity of 25% to 28%, I believe. Excellent. That's right. Yes. Now, I've got a couple of questions from listeners regarding the bus yes. services. In Waikanae, oh, why is there only yeah. an hourly bus service instead of half hourly during the day around Waikanae uh, at the moment? In the peak hour, I see it's every half hour, but during the day, it's only once every hour. Well, I mean, that's the reality of, you know, when you bus services, we put more buses on for peak hours because just more people are being moved and then that's a very common practice in cities and towns where you don't have the patronage in that middle part of the day so you just need to taper it off um, because otherwise you're burning money, burning ratepayers' money and burning taxpayers' money for services that um, don't warrant it um, You know when we don't have the patronage but of course you know, you've got your boom time uh, in those peak hours. Yeah, so that's fair enough. I was just thinking, you know, if I was a... I can understand that. That makes logic. But I was just understanding if you were a person who's wanting to go on a certain train at a certain time, you've got to wait for an hour for a bus sort of thing, and it doesn't quite tie up with the train service you want. You either wait at the station, which is not too bad now. It's every 20 minutes. But it just, um, uh, yeah, it makes it a wee bit more awkward for people, I suppose. And, I mean... In, the, in an ideal world, you know, we would um, have all those regular services, extra ones during the day. But, you know, it's the balance of um, how much money we burn through because we have to top up public transport. Um, the money that you pay as a ticket holder uh, actually only accounts for half of the cost of running um, public transport. The rest of the money, we get a share, a quarter of it from ratepayers and a quarter of it from taxpayers through NZTA. So, you know, we have to make the, the call on what's the balance. Of course, you're on gold card, you're not paying a thing. That's the other yes, uh, great but, issue. you know, that's, that's through the tax dollar supporting yep. um, that uh, availability because gold card users, um, you know, it's something I have to regularly remind people of, or if they don't know at all, that's not a subsidy that comes through from the regional council, that's a subsidy that comes through from the taxpayer. Okay. So yep. Greater Wellington Regional Council get part of that. Do they back to help run these systems? Uh, no, what happens is that public transport is in part funded through the government, through the NZTA who allocate the money. And that's money taken from everybody through their tax dollars. And that accounts for 20, you know, the model, or the formula rather, that covers 25% of the cost of running public transport. Then on your rates, when you'll see your public transport element of the makeup of your rates, that money then gathers up and accounts for 25% of the money. And then uh, me as a ticket holder, when I get on a bus or get on a train, the fare I pay is actually only 50% of what the true costs are. Okay. Now, the other question was uh, the stadium pass, which we used to get for Wellington, I think it was about $12 for adults, return $6 for children. Is that still in existence or has it been cut out? 
No, so that all that was changed when we went through this consultation process last year. It was sort of, you know, that July, August, September, we uh, looked at how, do, how can we actually simplify some of these things? How can we manage the complexity of it? We looked at how we would um, bring in some subsidies that hadn't existed or kind of recommit to some subsidies that we did have. And um, the simplifications of those passes was at that point recognising that um, it just was really tricky to manage. Um, so, you know, we'll just sort of... A lot of this, too, you know, to say we, we've put in place, we've made changes, but, you know, we always want to be keeping an eye on, we never want to close the door completely on things. Uh, if there's um, support for things and, and we kind of go, well, actually, there was a really good reason why that used to work, um, you know, we're always open to being convinced. But uh, at this point, it's, it had been simplified to not... Um, not continue, but also one of the, and I can't remember the specifics of it, but I remember part of the debate was that, in fact, uh, there were so many anomalies, you know, depending on where you got and who you got on with and what the event was and what the timing of it was and, and all these sorts of things. It had so many loopholes and all that sort of thing. It wasn't a good system. Right. Yeah, in terms of in terms of the ratepayers funding it, as I say, I've just explained about the formula. You know, that's ratepayers doing a lot of subsidising in there for some of those um, ticket uh, event packages. Right. It's just that on the website, apparently, it says event passes available, and they weren't quite sure. It didn't explain to them what they meant by the event passes, like we used to have. Yeah. Whether there is an event pass, or whether you've got to buy a snapper ticket or some other ticket to get the benefits of that. Cool. I'll, I mean, I'll I'll, um, I'll follow that up, and next week let's pick up on that one again. Right, because is it'll apply tomorrow night yeah. for the big uh, rugby match you see down at Wellington. Oh, yeah. That's what okay. they were thinking about. Maybe I'd better get back to you a bit sooner than that. Oh, it might be a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And now, look, last week we touched on the... You asked a question about the beach ban. Yes. That had been in the media. And so I followed that up, and I met with staff in Wellington yesterday just to kind of get my head around that. So what that's come through about is that um, back in 2015 now, when... Greater Wellington Regional Council put out their proposed natural resources plan. Uh, there were um, what well, is a very large kind of proposed plan, uh, in amongst there all sorts of things, and in there were the what what's the kind of now been identified as potential beach ban. And um, you know, Regional Council is responsible for the bit of the beach that goes up to that mean high tide mark. Okay. You know, so essentially where the waves might get to. Yes. And then beyond that, the, and probably the vast majority of all our beaches, continues to be your local district council, in our case, KCDC. So the changes that are being proposed were around, particularly around estuary areas where there are birds nesting. So, you know, making sure that actually we kind of factor in the kind of the greater levels of protection that are actually now required for on us from kind of national policies and um, that stuff's actually going through that particular part of that proposed national natural resources plan is at the hearing stage right now and anybody who had made a submission on it um, is being heard and then that will be considered it's um, scheduled to come out with um, the, kind of the outcomes of that end of November. We'll see how that lands. Uh, but I know I did check that, um, for example, KCDC had done um, a significant submission but had not raised concerns about that particular thing because in terms of, um, I guess, they were happy with what was being proposed um, in the proposal. Right, so when does so, it all get yeah, finalised? So that's, sort of, so that's what I'm saying is it's scheduled to have the the commissioners come back with their views on those at the end of November. Good on you. Thanks for your time this yeah. morning, Penny, and we'll chat to you next week. Great, thank you. Penny Gaylor, Greater Wellington Regional Rep here on Beach FM. 106.3 Beach FM.